This morning's scripture reading will be Mark 12, 28 through 34. <coughs> One of the scribes came and heard them arguing, and recognizing that he had answered them well, asked him, What commandment is the foremost of all? And Jesus answered, The foremost is here, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, Right, teacher, you have truly stated that he is one, and there is no one else besides him, and to love him with all, your, all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as himself is much more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Then Jesus saw that he had answered intelligently, and he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one would venture to ask him any more questions. Good morning. You may uh, have noticed a little bit different order to the services this morning, uh, some fewer songs and, and things, and it's not that we're trying to rush through things today, but we do have some special, I uh, want to dedicate some time to some special announcements coming up, and, and uh, so in, in honor of that and not prolonging things too much this morning, we did abbreviate the, the song service a little bit, and and uh, I've been told to abbreviate the lesson a little bit <laughs> as well. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but it's not fair because this is basically the last sermon in a series that I've been sp- spent almost the whole year on. And you want me to do the abbreviate the last sermon in a year-long series? And that was kind of cruel. Uh, but we'll see what we can do here. So uh, the good news is that... With this lesson, I do get to wrap up what we've been talking about in regards to the kingdom, but I also basically get to introduce what we're going to be talking about for the whole next year. So is this going to be my last sermon of a series, or is it my first sermon of a series? I'll let you decide uh, how that that kind of plays out. But we have been, uh, as mentioned, talking about the kingdom for the last year, and, and some of the things that we've talked about in relation to the kingdom are the idea that that kingdom is eternal that it was planned before the creation of the universe by God, that God knew that kingdom was going to be uh, a part of our existence today, and, and his plans for that kingdom predated even his creation of mankind. And, and so as we look at that, the, the idea of it being an enduring kingdom, as Daniel said, and, and it's going to be a kingdom that God had thought about in ages past, but it, it's a kingdom that continues on into eternity as well. And so we are living in a a specific time frame or a specific manifestation of that kingdom, but we need to realize that that kingdom is much bigger than the the picture that we have of it just in this life. Um, We talked about that it uh, is a kingdom that uh, cannot be shaken, one that despite the forces of evil that, that work against that kingdom in this world, that uh, efforts to throw roadblocks in front of that kingdom or its development or its uh, its growth, that kingdom cannot be shaken because it's got the power of God behind it. We talked about the fact that the kingdom is built upon a rock, and that rock is the truth of Jesus Christ as God's son, and, uh, and that is the foundation of that kingdom. We uh, spent several lessons talking about the relation of hope uh, to the kingdom and, and how it is a kingdom of hope, and it's only inside of that kingdom or only in God's kingdom that we have hope. Uh, in in this life and we talked about that kingdom being a place in which we belong Uh, it's a there's a place for everybody in God's kingdom and we need to make sure that we are uh, that we are spreading the news of that kingdom to make sure that uh, as many people enter that kingdom as we can uh, as we can possibly uh, make happen in this life so as we look at sort of an overview or a, a quick synopsis there of some of the things that we've talked about uh, I wanted to, to spend today's lesson uh, for just a couple of moments talking about what Jesus said there in Mark chapter 12. And as he is asked by that scribe, you know, what is the greatest commandment? And, and, uh, and it's so often that, that questions were asked of Jesus in an attempt to, um, to stump him or to entrap him in some way. And Jesus, of course, far more so than any of us, always had the perfect answer 
or the perfect response to those questions. And here, once again, he demonstrates his knowledge of God's word and he demonstrates his knowledge of God uh, himself in being able to answer the way that he does. And so he answers appropriately that the most important commandment is to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second commandment is very similar to it, to love our neighbor as ourselves, because it's an outflowing, it's an outpouring of that first commandment. If we, uh, in First John, it says, if we don't love God who we haven't seen, how can we possibly love our brother who we have seen? And we can't love our brother if we, or we can't love God if we don't love our brother. And so if we want to obey that first most important commandment, we must, we must obey that second commandment which is to love our brothers. And so there's a strong connection there between those two. And, and so the scribe agrees with him. He said, well, that, that was a good answer. That was the answer you should have given. And, and that demonstrates to me that you have some understanding of the law and you have some understanding of, of who we are to be as God's people. And so Jesus then has that encounter with the scribe there where he tells him, um, he tells him that, that you are very close to the kingdom of heaven. He says in verse um, verse 34, sorry there, verse 34, when Jesus saw that he had answered intelligently, he says, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one would venture to ask him any more questions. Well, they saw that, that this scribe, who obviously was somebody who knew the law, who knew the, the ins and outs of, uh, of things, was not able to stomp or to confused Jesus and so they didn't have any hope of being able to do it themselves but Jesus response to this man that you are close to the kingdom of God is one that uh, that I want us to think about it for just a moment what does it mean to be not far to be close to the kingdom of God well have you ever been trying to get somewhere and you could see it but you couldn't quite get to it that happened to us when we were in um, uh, Pascagoula, Mississippi, after Hurricane Katrina. We took a, our first scouting trip down there, and I remember it was me and Gene Vasper, and I honestly can't remember who else was on that trip. But Gene had this neat new little device in his car called a GPS, and those were kind of new back then, and not everybody had those things, and Gene was kind of proud of that thing, and, and that GPS knew exactly where we were at all times, but there was a problem many of the bridges and roads were gone after Hurricane Katrina got, got done with them. And so there were a couple of times on that trip where we would be sitting at the end of a road, able to see what we wanted to get to, and the GPS telling us to proceed over a gorge that used to be a bridge. And we could see it, but we couldn't get to it. We were not far from where we needed to be, but we were not very close to where we needed to be. And Jesus here telling this man, you are not far from the kingdom of heaven. I I want it so, so desperately to be an encouragement to this man. I want it so, so badly to be Jesus urging him, begging him, pleading him, take that one final step that will bring you to the place that you need to be. But so often when we receive that admonition, when we receive that news that we're we're close to where we need to be. So often we say, well, close is probably good enough. Close is probably close enough. And we don't take that final step. We don't take that final move that we need to take to get to the place that we need to be. And so I wonder about this scribe. I wish we had the rest of the story. I wish there were more verses after this one that told us You know, the next day he came back to Jesus and he said, tell me more. Tell me about what I need to do to take those final steps, to take that that final move that will take me from being close to where I should be to be where I need to be. But we don't have that information. We don't know that story. And so we have to fill in those blanks with our own life story. We have to fill in those blanks with our own understanding of who we are in the presence of God, in the presence of the Son of God, as he looks at us and he examines our lives, and does he tell us, you are not far from the kingdom of God, what are we going to do with that? Are we going to take that final step that we need to take to be in the kingdom of God? 
Being close is good, but it's not where we want to be. We want to be in God's kingdom. And so as we kind of make the transition from the topic of kingdom into our topic for next year, uh, it was brought up in a recent elders, preachers, and deacons meeting that we were coming to the conclusion of this study of the kingdom, and we were kind of talking as, as elders and preachers about where to go next, and we had some thoughts and ideas, and, and uh, it, was, it was opened up to sort of discussion amongst the deacons then at that point about input that they might have, and, uh, and someone, uh, I think his name was Dave, brought up the idea that maybe we should talk about love, and it's relationship to the kingdom that we've been talking about and and here's a clear indication from Jesus himself that love and kingdom are strongly connected and as we understand what it means to be people in God's kingdom that maybe we need to have a really strong grasp on love maybe we need to have a really clear understanding on what it means to love and to be loved and so that's our topic for next year we're going to talk about love and one of the things that I take from, uh, from this is, is sort of a, a very basic general uh, sort of introduction to what we'll be talking about over the next year is that, number one, we need to speak love. We need to speak love. If, if we are to be people that demonstrate God's love or that show God's love or that understand what love is, we need to be people who are constantly speaking about love and speaking words of love to other people. So look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. This is one of those passages that we just come back to all the time. We come back to this passage over and over and over again, and it's often at this time of year when we're talking about goals and things that we want to set forth for the congregation about who we want to be and how we want to grow over the next year and what our emphasis needs to be and, and all of those kind of things. We constantly find ourselves back here in Ephesians chapter 4. And so I don't know why I was surprised when I saw how well it fit with what we're going to do for the upcoming year. Verses 11 through uh, 16 read, And he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the works of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love. We are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by that which every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. The last part of that, that passage, after he talks about the, the place that we all have as a part of God's body, and you know, interestingly, we could, we could kind of make a substitution. I don't like to do that too often because it... We don't want to modify God's word, but we, could we substitute the word kingdom for body? Is that, elder, is that okay? I, I think that's okay. I think if we understand that the body is the kingdom, that Christ's body in this world, the church, is God's kingdom in this world, that we could, that we could have that emphasis in this passage where we're talking about everybody has a place in the kingdom. Everybody has a role to fill. Everybody has a a thing to do, and he says, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up into all aspects in him who is the head, that is the king, even Christ. He is the king of our kingdom. And as we speak that truth, as we speak love, we are promoting the growth of the body, the kingdom. And so that's our connection between what we've been studying and what we're moving into study. The connection of kingdom and love. As we speak the truth in love, the kingdom will grow. It will grow both spiritually as we encourage and lift up one another through the truth that we speak, and it will grow numerically as we go out and we speak that truth to those who don't know about the kingdom yet. And so speaking the truth in love is central to the topic of the kingdom. 
But not only should we speak love, we should also show love. Romans 5 verse 8 says, God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God loves us. And we can never, ever, ever doubt that love because he has demonstrated it. You know, it's one thing to, to say, I love you, I love you, I love you. But at some point, if those words aren't supported by actions, the words begin to sound hollow. God has always proclaimed his love for us. He has always told us of his love for us. But the way that we really know that God loves us is he demonstrated it. He showed us his love by giving us his son to die on the cross. We also see God's love demonstrated or shown to us in 1 John 3, verses 16 through 18. It says, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and in truth. See, God has demonstrated his love for us. We know God's love because he came and died for us. And we need to demonstrate our love for others, even to the point of laying down our lives for them. We need to be so committed to love that if given the chance, we give our lives to demonstrate that love. That's the way that God teaches us to love. That's the way that Jesus teaches us to love. And that's the way we need to respond to that teaching. So we have this connection then between kingdom and love. And we're going to build on that connection through the coming year. And uh, we're going to look at it in this way. Our call to action this week is, is this passage, John chapter 13. John 13, verses 31 to 35. John 13, verses 31 to 35 reads like this. When therefore he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I am with you a little while longer. You shall seek me. And as I said to the Jews, I now say also to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Now, wait a minute. How did we start this lesson? With a scripture that, that tells us that Jesus quoted from the old law, saying that love was the most important commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's the first and the second commandment. And, and the scribe confirmed it and said, yep, you're right. But Jesus here gathered in the upper room with his disciples immediately after Judas leaves to go betray him introduces them to the idea of a new commandment. And then that new commandment is to love one another. How is it a new commandment if it's the same one that has been here since the old law was given? And I think we see exactly how that is answered by the way that Jesus phrases it. He says, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. He doesn't stop there though. That you love one another, even as I have loved you. You see, we think we know what love is. We think we understand that concept, and we have things that we can compare it to. If you're, a, if you're married, you, you know what love is. You have a spouse, you know what love is. If, you, if you've got children, you know what love is. If, you've got, if you're a teacher, and you, you love your students... If you've got a friend that you've been friends with since you were a little bitty and you've spent your whole lives being friends together, you know what love is. And then Jesus comes on the scene and says, wait a minute, let me teach you how to love. Let me show you what love is. 
Let me really help you understand the depth and the breadth of love. Because until we love like Jesus, we don't really know what love is. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And so Jesus is telling us to say what I say. That's what he told his disciples to do. He, he spent three years with them, teaching them the things that they should say that would show that love that he has for other people. And he spent three years with them, showing them what they were supposed to do so that they could demonstrate their love for one another and their love for mankind. Jesus was teaching them to love how I love. And that's our challenge. To love the way that Jesus loves. To understand love the way that he understands it. To perform it, to speak it, to demonstrate it the way that he did. And so we're going to spend the next year talking about love. And so I kept the lesson short. Now I'm going to keep going, though, because they asked me to, uh, to kind of give an overview of some of the things that we'll be talking about over the next year before get, Greg gets up uh, to uh, fill in some other things. So over the next year, as we talk about the idea of love, we have a new theme verse. We've had uh, Hebrews 6, 19 up here for the last year. We'll soon have a new banner up that has 1 John 4 verse 16 on it, God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. And that'll be our sort of our theme verse for the year, and we'll tie everything back to God's love, because that's where it has to start. And since that's where it has to start, that's what we'll spend the first quarter talking about. We'll talk about God loves us. And so for those first three months of the year, we will uh, focus on, on the idea of God's love for us. What is love? How is love defined? Uh, how, it is how is it expressed? How is it demonstrated? And what is our proper response to God's love? All of those things are questions that we'll uh, take a look at and we'll attempt to answer during that first quarter. Um, sometime during that first quarter, we will also hopefully be able to get a, a seminar planned with the preacher from Beloit named Dustin Doherty, and that will be sort of an evangelism seminar uh, that will teach us to use a, a system of study that he has been using and is certified to train us in. So um, be looking for that during the first quarter to, uh, to spend a Saturday doing that, which will prepare us for some things that are coming up through the rest of the year as well. In quarter two, we're going to talk about we love God. So we'll spend the first quarter talking about God loving us and the second quarter talking about us loving God. Our love for God must be continually growing. And we need to demonstrate our love for God in various ways. And so uh, we'll talk about many of the ways that we can demonstrate how we, how we love God. In this quarter, expect at least for part of it for there to be a focus on worship uh, with uh, the possibility there as well of having maybe a speaker in to talk to us about that or a seminar of some kind, perhaps on singing or, or some other aspect of worship that can help us make that connection of the since we love God, and that's one of the things that we're supposed to do, or the first thing that we're supposed to do. How do we express that, especially how do we express it in worship? During the third quarter, uh, we will focus our lessons on loving one another. We love one another. Uh, as we, we mentioned earlier, how can we love our brother who we have seen if we, have, if we don't love God? Or how can we love God who we haven't seen if we don't love our brother who we have seen? And so we want to spend time talking about loving one another. We'll focus on specific personal relationships and some practical ways to express the love that we have for one another. Um, we will be having, uh, hopefully during that quarter, a marriage seminar, a marriage and family seminar uh, to focus on those relationships. And one example that I thought of is, as we talk about the idea of loving one another, and I wanted to introduce this idea anyway, um, on Wednesday nights here recently, we have been studying the book of Isaiah and as we wrapped up this quarter's study last uh, Wednesday night we got to the part where Hezekiah is told that he has a terminal illness and I said when we read through that part that there was more to that that I wanted to talk about at the end and then the bell rang like it always does and I didn't get to finish um, but this Wednesday uh, this coming Wednesday Lord willing we will be zooming with my friend Paul 
And you guys know Paul from the announcements and things that we've been talking about over the last uh, couple of years as Paul has dealt with his terminal illness uh, of pancreatic cancer. And Paul and I, well, we can talk about anything, and we have. And we are able to have discussions about things like terminal illness and what it's like to know that you're dying. And not everybody has that ability or that relationship with somebody where they're able to have that conversation. And so Wednesday night, we're going to let Paul talk to us about what it's like to, to be in that position and what people can say that are helpful and other things, times that, that people say things that are well-intentioned, that are from the heart, that are the, the most, uh, most well-intentioned thing, but still can be hurtful. How do we love somebody who's dying? And how do we do it in a way that supports them and gives them the, uh, just the support and the reassurance that they need in their time of difficulty? So I hope that you can be with us Wednesday night. That's the kind of thing uh, that we want to address, not just this week, but then we want to address uh, that and similar things to it in our third quarter this year as we talk about uh, how we love one another. So um, I thought that fit in there, the idea of what we'll be doing Wednesday night fit in with that discussion. So I wanted to put that tagline in there. So if you can be with us Wednesday night. And then back to the topic at hand, our theme for 2023, the fourth quarter will be spent talking about loving the lost. Um, no series on love could be complete without talking about what we need to do for those who don't know God's love. And we need to love the lost. Um, we need to share what we have with those who don't have it. So during that quarter, expect there to be a Bring a Friend Sunday. Expect there to be a Mission Emphasis Sunday where we talk about what our foreign mission work looks like and, and maybe having them able to zoom in and talk to us and having some special uh, lessons about that type of work as well. Uh, so there is our uh, preaching theme and our, uh, our Bible study theme for 2023. And hopefully the things uh, now that Greg is going to introduce us to will, will sort of fit in with that theme. Am I supposed to give an invitation now or does that come later? I'll do it right now. Okay. Uh, we didn't talk about that point. So um, we do always want to conclude a time of Bible study with an invitation. As we've talked about the kingdom for this year and as we, we relate back to the, the lesson for today, there may be somebody here who is close to the kingdom of God, somebody here who, who knows that, that it's going to take one more step, that there's not, there's not been the right direction or the right emphasis in their life up to this point, and they need to take that final step so that they can know they are in God's kingdom. And if you're in that, that situation, if, you're, if that describes you today, then then why would you not leave here today knowing that you're part of God's kingdom? Why would you not leave here today knowing that you have embraced God's love and that you're now one of his children? And so if we can help you with that, if, if we need to study with you, if we need to encourage you in some way, we, we certainly want to do that today. If you would come while we stand and sing. Can wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jason. Um, you know, I think Gary might have said you, you chewed my gum, but I, I somewhat, but I, I don't view it that way. I, I think when hearts and minds are on the same page, it's a God thing. And um, you gave a better review than, than I could have and uh, had planned to do. So a lot of the things that I was going to say under review, we've already reviewed, and that's good. Um, you know, the, we could have picked a lot of verses that had to do with kingdom. 
you know, we're going to talk about kingdom this year. Why didn't we put a kingdom verse up there? Um, but really, the thing that we hoped that we could get to this year and, and really get um, wrap our, our minds around was the eternal nature of the kingdom and, and how our hope, really, our joy and our peace all depend on getting and understanding uh, that, that the kingdom is eternal. And I, the, the thing that we've said several times that, that kind of brings it home for me is the concept that, that our, our body doesn't have a soul. Our soul has a body, and we're going to get a new body that um, is beyond what we can understand as far as eternal. Um, and that Jesus showed us that, and, and the lesson we had in class this morning fit right in with the eternal nature of, of, of how we are resurrected new uh, with a new body. Um, and it just changes everything. You know, if, if you get that and you understand that, you know, how I, I'm, I'm going to be interested to hear Paul and, and what he has to say. Um, but, you know, it'd be, it'd be very difficult to have, we all have a terminal illness, we just don't realize it. You know, but if you know you, you have a limited time, like Hezekiah, you know, um, then, then it becomes really where your peace and joy and hope lie. Um, and that's where we are all the time, and we just need to know that. And so that's why we picked that verse, that that's the hope we have as the anchor for our soul. And, um, and, and we hope that we've, we've kind of helped everybody get to that point. Well, uh, and Jason also, I, I, I think, I don't know if we got the slides going. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, we can skip the first slide or two. Um, but Jason did a great job of, 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 of developing the idea of, of why we're studying the love of God. Um, you know, he, he mentioned that as elders and preachers, we meet um, every three or four months and for a time of prayer and a time of study. And, and then we bring our thoughts and, and, and study to the deacons to, to get their input. And um, halfway through the year, we kind of did that. Um, and actually, as I recall, it, it, was, it was Jim. Because one of the things that we were talking about was, um, well, this has been a tough year, tough two or three years. You know, uh, it, it's really has struck at, at the, the core of a lot of us, you know, in trying to, to maintain our faithfulness and, and our faith. Um, and attendance is just part of that. But you know what a hit attendance took everywhere as we, you know, did more online services and, and so on. And, and yet it's time to come back together. And it's time to, to recognize that we need to be faithful for those of us who can physically come back to, to the, to the uh, building. Um, and so we were struggling with that. And Jim said, well, it, there isn't a program for that. You know, it's a love issue. It's an it's a understanding what Jesus has done for you issue. And then Dave said, maybe that's what we should study next year. Um, so we, we took that to heart, and we came back, and, and we did some more study as, as elders and preachers and, and came back with, with some new plans. And, and that's kind of what we're looking at uh, for next year is, is how we can do this. It, it, we really need to get the loving part right. As, as Jason's point out, it, it's, it's foundational. It's a salvation issue. It's how we become and are part of the kingdom. If, if we don't, um, if, we, if we're kingdom dwellers, we, we need to understand how to love God, how to love each other, and how to love the lost. Um, we, we, we're coming full cycle. We're coming back to trying to connect McPherson and the world to God's love and, and honor that of, uh, banner that we've had up for several years now. So there were some verses that we looked at, and, and one of them was the key verse for this morning in Matthew 22, where Jesus said to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, we looked at, in, at Matthew 25, 
where Jesus spells out, how is it that we love him? How is it that we, we love Jesus? Um, he, he, he says it in unmistakable terms that, that if we feed and clothe others and visit those in prison, uh, uh, care for others, take strangers in, help the sick, whoever we did it for, we did it for him. Um, so it's a very much a hands-on f- kind of love. It's not an intellectual love. It's a love that has flesh on it, you know, that, that we, we look at, at ways of, of reaching out. Um, um, and, and, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to come up with ways to do that better. Uh, James tells us that faith without works is dead. Both John and Jesus have said over and over again that loving God means you love your brother. And loving God means obeying his commands. And his command is to love each other. So... Here we are. Um, Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. So that's, that's where we want to start. We want to commit ourselves to the Lord, and, and now we're trying to establish some plans. Um, so what have we discussed? You know, Jason's already laid out the preaching schedule. Um, and how we plan to do uh, some things during that that fit. The adults and, and teen classes will be using teaching materials appropriate to where we are in, in that quarter for the worship service. We'd like to start something new, the, the second Sunday service. This will begin January 8th. With every second Sunday, we'll begin at 5 o'clock uh, with a simple catered meal at 5.30 worship, and then 6 o'clock, we want to break up, uh, probably using the one circles to help organize and divide into picking activities that, that fit what you feel capable of doing. Uh, uh, there'll be some to stay at the building and write cards and do other activities. There'll some to go to nursing homes or assisted living facilities or just anywhere people are unable to get out for worship. And, you know, there were, I don't know about you, but when I couldn't come to worship during the initial stages of COVID, I was depressed. I really missed being with you guys. Um, um, I hated it. And we've got so many that, that really can't, you know, that's where they are. They, they can't worship with us. Maybe we can help a little bit by taking worship to them. And um, spend some time and, and, and maybe do a few work projects while we're there. Um, Wednesday night, uh, we'll be moving up to 6.30 uh, to help those of us who get sleepy, young and old. <laughs> uh, we'll continue with Jason Justin format looking at Old and New Testament uh, verses. Um, the fifth Sunday fellowship meals will continue um, in order to focus on worship activities better we'll resume worship in the auditorium after the meal. One Circles will continue on the fourth Sunday with a focus on the Sunday morning Bible verses uh, and include some worship activities as well with the meal and fellowship. Jason's mentioned some of the special activities that we hope to do. Um, um, A Saturday one-day evangelism seminar, a simplified approach um, that is practical that we can all get behind to share God's love. Um, We want to have a weekend marriage seminar. We have somebody in mind that's willing to do it, and and we'll just um, get that uh, put on the schedule as soon as possible. And there'll be other family focus activities during that third quarter. The men's breakfast, uh, we're we're gonna um, do a monthly uh, Saturday morning breakfast with work activities, and we'll start that on January 7th. Men and boys retreat. Um, you know, the women just do it. We have to talk about it for a long time. So we'll, we'll, get, it, we'll get it done. Um, we're open to suggestions. Um, the, this, is, this is our initial thrust at, at uh, trying to find activities and ways to put some, some flesh on, on, on our love and to, to, to fulfill the commandment to love each other. Um, let's, let's pray we, we grow in faithfulness, you know, as we, as we do these things. 
But let's be mindful too that Proverbs 16, 9 says, the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Um, I don't know how many times I've seen God do this, but I've lost count where we plan something and we, we start to do it and then we see God redirect us and make it better than we planned. And, and we're just praying that that's what God does this time too. That, um, you know, if we're moving, God can redirect us. And, and so that's, that's what we're hoping to do, uh, that, that he'll make our plans better. So let's dig in and see where God will take us here in 2023. We do want to take a minute to uh, remember in prayer those who uh, are needing prayer requests. Um, I do have a, a note from Marilyn. Um, her sister Gladys Huber broke her leg and, and suffered a concussion on Saturday in the fall. Uh, she's in Wesley in Wichita, so we want to remember her. Some good news. Um, have a, she has a great Great, and she has a new great granddaughter, uh, Maisie Bell Kaluva, born December 8th at 2.15 a.m. You know, I, there's some things I don't miss about delivering babies, and, and it, <laughs> they always came in the middle of the night. Um, six pounds, 14 ounces, 19 inches long. Um, so um, we rejoice with that, and, and of course, we want to remember in prayer Gladys. Gladys is one of those ones that we have in the prayer list, and, and you, you can, you know, of course, uh, see that in our bulletin and the prayer list at the back, a, a more extensive list. Um, Chris Mines had her surgery on Friday. It went well. Uh, it, it's a painful surgery, so she's still recovering. Um, Jordan, uh, the Richardson's uh, granddaughter, still having some things that we want to pray about with her, uh, Hodgkins, and Megan, Barb's uh, uh, Granddaughter also, we want to remember her with her uh, uh, malignancy. Claude's still healing. Um, and uh, we do want to remember uh, John and Leslie. They're not with us today because uh, they traveled to be with uh, Leslie's mother, uh, Leah Wand, who's um, in hospice. I want to remember them. Kevin Linder still serving our country uh, in Kuwait. Uh, Poppy's, Poppy's looking at maybe some surgery, so we want to remember her. Um, Barb Bitter's uh, daughter um, has a high-risk pregnancy, and we want to remember that. Um, the, the granddaughter we prayed for last week uh, that uh, had two different viruses is better. Um, so, and then uh, Carol, um, who's been in loving care, uh, fell this week and, and fractured her ankle. Um, so we do want to remember Carol. Um, she's in uh, um, McPherson Care and Rehab, I think, right now, uh, uh, healing. Would you bow with me as we go to our Father in prayer? Holy Father, we do come before you just praying for your wisdom and your guidance in all that we do. We know that that we fall short, but that you can lift us up, that your grace and, and your providence can help us to be more than we are. And we pray that as we go into 2023, that you'd help us to grasp better how to love, and that you'd help us to really live out what we've learned this year about the kingdom, and especially the hope that we have. In, in eternity. Father, we do pray that you'd be with Chris as she heals, that you'd be with Jordan and Megan, and that the right treatments will be given for them, that Claude will continue to heal, that you'd be with Leslie and her family in, in the, this time with her mother, uh, that, that that time might be well spent and that, that they will be able to, to be with her through this and support her and that, and that the, the time of passing will be one of ease. Father, we do pray that you be with Kevin, that you keep him safe. Pray for Poppy and that just the right treatments will be done at just the right time. We're, we, we're thankful that Barb Bitter's granddaughter is better and that you'd be with her, her daughter in the pregnancy. Father, we do ask that you be with Gladys and that she might heal 
and, and that she might heal without complication. We pray also that you'd um, be with Carol and that she might heal and, and that her pain might be under control. We're thankful for the new little one, uh, Maisie Bell, and we pray that you would bless her and her family with, with your love. Father, as we leave here, we pray that, that our steps would be the steps where you direct us, that you, that you would help us to overcome the evil one, and that you would help us to be truly loving. We pray these things through your son's holy name. Amen.